Well, mathematically speaking, we still have nine drivers technically eligible for a championship, but I think in reality, it may be becoming very clear who's going to be lifting that championship trophy at the end of the year. Abby pulling one race one and took third in the second race, continuing an all podium finishing streak. And remarkably, that third place result in race two is her worst finish of the season so far. At the pace that she's on, she could reduce that mathematical number of drivers left in the championship fight to as low as two. Dorian Penn may be still the only one still with any sort of prayer at taking this championship fight to Abby Pulling. We'll talk about her in just a minute. But first, Emily, we'll start with you here. When I say there's nine drivers mathematically eligible, that includes uh, drivers like Jess Edgar, Aurelia, Aurelia Nobles, uh, who are on 22 points to Pulling's 190. They would have to take pole position, set the fastest lap, and win every race from here on out assuming Abby Pulling doesn't score a single point. So realistically speaking, can we crown Abby Pulling champion-elect here? Does she seem to have one hand on this trophy already at this point in the season? Well, I'm already going to use a word that you use, Ben. It's truly remarkable that third place is her lowest finish of the season so far. And again, she was just so dominant in race one. I mean, obviously, Dorian had a unfortunate time penalty um, for her false start, which Again, a little questionable when you rewatch it, but we're going to go with the race directors and what they saw. But at the end of the day, Abby had a six second lead over Naria Marti. And again, race two, she put on a gallant effort to try to take uh, overtake uh, Maya Woog. But of course, she had that home race advantage. So we all know that you get the extra boost of speed when you're racing at home. Um, but again, to go back to your question, uh, Ben, I we've been talking about it for weeks. Abby has had one hand on the trophy for weeks and I'm going to say it with my full chest. This is Abby Pulling's championship to lose at this point. Um, of course, next race we're going to see the ladies is out in Singapore and I, I guess there is an advantage for the other competitors because the women haven't raced there before. So perhaps that's going to level out the field, but Abby is just running away with this championship and she's been so dominant so far. I, I can't imagine she's going to have a disastrous end of her season. Yeah, I completely agree with you here, Emily. You know, I think that it's very obvious that Abby Pulling is going to take home the championship at the end of this 2024 season. Um, as Ben pointed out, you know, her worst place finish this season was third place. It's still a podium finish. So what does that tell you about Abby Pulling? You know, it's it's insane. And I think she's had a great season. She's a talented driver. And then, um, you know, something else that Ben pointed out is that by the next uh, race, she could bring down that number of the drivers who are eligible in the championship to two. And I think that you know, after it's it's just going to come down to one at one point, and then it's, it's just going to be going to Abby. So I, I don't have much more to add. I just really think that there's no other driver you can look at at this point. Now, probably a matter of when, not if, that championship is officially clinched. You're right, but I think Abby Pulling is performing how we expected Dorian Penn perhaps to perform. She was, I think, the one that, especially after the first weekend in Saudi Arabia, where she crossed the finish line first in both races. Of course, she had that what I still think was incredibly too harsh of a time penalty for uh, taking an extra lap in race two and an injury has also set her back here, but she's second in points uh, 71 back of Abby pulling right now. Like I mentioned, she had that injury that she was recovering from in Spain. Now here at the Dutch Grand Prix weekend uh, ended up taking the win in race two, her first podium since Miami. Does that give her any sort of spark here? Can she take the championship fight to Abby pulling still or is Abby too far out in front? Mathematically, she would need to outscore her by 11 points per race. That would, even if she wins out here, require some help from Abby Pulling not performing how she's been performing all year. I don't see it happening. Uh, ben, as you pointed out earlier this season, we were all looking at Dorian Penn. We were talking about her. Um, but I think that at this point right now, Abby's the one to watch out for. Um, she's just going to take the championship home. And as you mentioned, you know, Dorian Penn, needs 11 points, not just 11 points by the end of the season, but she needs to outscore Abby pulling by 11 points every race. And I don't see that happening. It's just not realistic. And I think that, um, you know, there's not much more for us to talk about. It's just going to Abby this season. Yeah. And I, I'm going to do another callback, Ben. I've been really focused on Dorian's unfortunate injury. But I think to your point, I think the momentum began going towards Abby with the time penalty that Dorian was uh, distributed back in the first weekend of the season. And that phrase of like, when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, the rest of your day just doesn't fall into place. I, I feel like that 
potentially was what Dorian has been trying to get caught up from since the beginning of the season. Um, and again, to your point, it's not just at, by the end of the season, she needs to finish 11 points ahead. She needs to do that every single race. And I just, I don't, I don't feel like it's feasible. Abby is just too dominant. She seems like she is just totally locked in. Um, again, more races to come. We have three more stops ahead. Again, two races per stop. So there are opportunities for Dorian to, to lessen the gap. But I just, I don't see Abby having a completely disastrous end to her season um, to give enough help to Dorian to, to make up the championship. Well, let's look a little bit further down the championship order here. We've got the young American Chloe Chambers in third. Naraya Marti is in fourth, and she is one of the five drivers that is not officially supported, fully supported by one of the 10 F1 teams. She's ahead of Maya Vogue from Ferrari, the three Red Bull affiliated drivers, and Bianca Bustamante in McLaren, with McLaren, uh, who's in seventh right now in the championship. So, Emily, if she returns to F1 Academy next year, would teams from Formula One start looking at Naraya Marti as a driver to pick up to fully back for the 2025 season? I, she's absolutely performed very consistently. And I, again, to, to your point, uh, she is doing what she needs to do somewhat like Abby Poling. She hasn't had too disastrous of a finish this season overall, I believe fourth place she's running currently in the championship. So she is putting her place as someone that should be considered and looked at as a consistent performer. The problem is that there are extremely limited opportunities in this field and extremely talented drivers, as we see in, you know, F1, F2, F3. So she certainly is someone that's aligning herself to be considered. But is there a spot for her? Is there an opportunity for her next year? That's what we're going to have to watch and find out. Yes, I think Emily brings up a great point. You know, looking at the championship, Nerea Marty is in fourth place. She's ahead of all three Red Bull drivers, the McLaren and uh, the driver for Ferrari. So I think that's a very good place to position yourself. But then, as Emily pointed out, you know, there is the risk of it, are the other teams going to be switching for drivers next season? Is there going to be a spot opening up for her? Um, so I think that, you know, if it were just looking at her performances and where she is in the championship right now, in comparison with the other drivers behind her, I think that she could very easily have a spot next season. But um, it does raise uh, some other concerns about, you know, where the other drivers would go, where uh, what teams would support what drivers. And I just um, think that it's something we're just going to have to look out for. You can't predict it at this point. All right, we'll leave it there. One clarification regarding the Red Bull drivers. I said the three affiliated drivers, of course, Emily DeHouse, Part of the Red Bull Academy, but it's the Alcabizi sisters, Hamda with Red Bull Racing and Amna with the RB team, respectively, that have the full backing. So just to clarify what we meant by that here. But we'll keep an eye on the standings and how everything continues to sort itself out here over these final few rounds. And, of course, more coverage of the F1 Academy right here on this show on the Grid Network.